Scuttle, look what we found! Disney movies are known for having cameos, and The Little Mermaid is no exception. We have a feeling you didn't know about all these familiar faces who appeared in The Little Mermaid. Let's check it out. Number 1. We certainly didn't expect to run into Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Donald Duck just hanging out underwater. But clearly they have gills we didn't know about. Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Donald Duck are among the crowd in this scene where King Triton is appearing to talk to his people. This easter egg is so subtle you definitely have to pause the movie to catch a glimpse of this moment. We still have no idea how these three pals are breathing underwater, but we're happy that they're together whether they're on land or in the sea. Number 2. Kermit the Frog also seems to be taking up residence under the sea. Just before you can see Mickey, Goofy, and Donald, Kermit the Frog is also among the crowd. But he is really, really hard to spot. We really wish that Miss Piggy was down there with him too. She's always the life of the party. Number 3. We're guessing you didn't expect to see Abraham Lincoln lurking in Ariel's Grotto. We definitely didn't either, but it's pretty clear that this bust is supposed to be our 16th president. Is Ariel a US history buff? Or did this just drop into the ocean one day? We're thinking most likely the latter, but it's unclear. Number 4. We think there's also a man from Pocahontas hanging with Lincoln. What do you think? Pocahontas didn't actually come out until after The Little Mermaid, and for pretty obvious reasons, it's pretty unusual for us to see an easter egg from the future. That said, it's not unheard of, and Pocahontas came out in 1995, six years after The Little Mermaid's premiere in 89. Was this a subtle hint toward another water-loving Disney princess yet to come? My name is Pocahontas. Either way, this bust in Ariel's grotto definitely resembles a man from Pocahontas. Number 5. Directors love making cameos in their own work, and The Little Mermaid's directors didn't let the fact that this movie is animated stop them from doing the same. Directors Ron Clements and John Musker seem to make an appearance at Prince Eric's wedding. While of course they look just a little different in this universe, it's still pretty clear that this is supposed to be them. Number 6. Wait a second, is that the Grand Duke and the King from Cinderella? In an even more surprising addition to Prince Eric and Ursula's wedding guest list, it seems that these two royals from Cinderella were in attendance. What this means for the timeline of Cinderella and the Little Mermaid is not entirely clear, but it does offer a little insight for those Disney fans who believe that the Disney princesses are all coexisting in the same universe. Number 7. And it seems that Robin Hood exists in this universe as well. Right in that same scene, that certainly looks a lot like Robin Hood. Sure, Prince Eric and Ursula's nuptials didn't turn out particularly well, but it seems like their wedding was still the fictional character event of the century. You know, he's getting married! While it's hard to be sure since he's only there for a moment, it looks like Robin Hood is also hiding in the background at this surprisingly crowded wedding reception. Number 8. It appears that Princess Aurora seems to exist in Ariel's universe too. A portrait of Princess Aurora and Prince Philip from Sleeping Beauty is hanging in Prince Eric's dining room. This certainly makes it seem that Sleeping Beauty took place before The Little Mermaid on the timeline. But whether or not Aurora and Eric were related, we can't quite tell. I'm sorry, Grim, what was that? He certainly seems to know who she is, though, and that means that Maleficent and Ursula actually existed at the same time. That would make for one villainous girl boss duo. Number 9. If you remember the incredible Mr. Limpet, you may be surprised that he made a very interesting appearance in The Little Mermaid. The Incredible Mr. Limpet was a movie made back in the 60s about a guy who just so happened to want to be a fish. I wish I were a fish. Now we see what looks to be a fish version of Mr. Limpet during Under the Sea. This is definitely a surprising reference, but when you think about it, it's clear that a man who wanted to be a fish actually becoming a fish for a musical number about how great living under the sea is, is deliberate. It's even more poignant when you remember that this whole movie is about a sort of fish who wants to be a human. It just goes to show that the grass is always greener on the other side. Or the ocean is always bluer. Whatever, you, you get the point. Number 10. Did you spot those people with mouse ears? This one looks like they're ready for a trip to Disney World in those Mickey ears. Or is it Mickey ear-shaped hair? Either way, it's pretty clear that these are hidden Mickeys throughout this group of people. Which is pretty funny considering the fact that another hidden Mickey in this crowd is Mickey himself. It's clear that Mickey exists in the Little Mermaid universe because we can see him and if people are wearing Mickey ears then it sounds like he's pretty famous even in that world. But it's still unclear why a mouse is living in the ocean. We're probably thinking a little too deep on this one. Number 11. You may be surprised to hear the kind of influence a woman named Sherry Lynn Stoner had on Ariel. 
Okay, this isn't a cameo per se, but Sherry Lynn Stoner came about as close to being in the movie as you can without actually being in the movie. In 1989, animation was very different than it is today, and it was common for actors to act out the scenes in order to help the animators make the characters and their movements look realistic. Stoner was a stand-in for Ariel's drawings and animation, and many of Ariel's quirks are modeled after her. Stoner was an improv comedian who was pulled in for her ability to tell a story through her physicality. But if you're wondering, no, Stoner is not a mermaid. It's pretty surprising to watch Stoner modeling for the movie, because we can see just how many mannerisms we're used to seeing from Ariel actually came from the actor who modeled for her. From her hand motions to that famous way the Little Mermaid blew her bangs out of her face. In fact, some of these side-by-side -side scenes are almost exactly alike. Are you sure about this? Have I ever been wrong? Number 12. The Drag Queen Divine is another person who made the Little Mermaid what it is. The solution to your problem is simple. Ursula was inspired by Divine, not only in her style, makeup, and look, which is pretty clear just by looking at the beloved Disney villain, but she also inspired Ursula's mannerisms, body language, and even her iconic voice. He is quite a catch, isn't he? <laughs> even if we didn't know about the direct connection between these two, we think they're pretty much twins. Just look at that hair, and those very unusual brows. Number 13. Alyssa Milano didn't exactly make a cameo in the movie, but she played a very important role in The Little Mermaid, and she didn't even know it. The creators behind designing Ariel revealed that Ariel's face was actually inspired by actor Alyssa Milano. You can kinda tell it's her, if you squint and tilt your head a little. Alyssa Milano herself didn't even know that she inspired the famous mermaid's looks until years later. It must be pretty cool to find out that a Disney princess was made to look just like you. Isn't she a visual? You look wonderful. It's interesting to think about how Ariel is actually a character played by many people all at once. From her voice to her look to her mannerisms, Ariel is a compilation of many talented folks. Number 14. There's a rumored hidden Mickey on Ursula's contract. If you're a fan of hidden Mickeys, there's a chance that you've heard about or seen this little face on one of the most famous contracts in Disney movie history. Yet, as it turns out, it seems that this isn't a real hidden Mickey, but an internet rumor instead. If you're still not sure, you'll have to take a look yourself and schedule a Little Mermaid rewatch. Frankly, it's probably a good time for that anyway. When you actually look at the movie and not the screen grab, it doesn't look like this hidden Mickey is actually there. And we think it makes a lot more sense that way. Why would Ursula put a mouse shape on her very important contract? It's time Ursula took matters into her own tentacles! Well, it seems like she actually didn't, but hidden Mickey hunters on the internet with editing skills are capable of creating a serious Mermaid Mandela effect situation. Did you catch all these cameos? Were there any other folks who appeared in The Little Mermaid that we missed? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to The Things Animated for all the latest on your favorite animated movies.